Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to today's work session. Uh, today is Monday, January the 30th, 2023. The, it is now 3 p.m. Uh, the work session of the City Council will now come to order. We have uh, a few items to discuss today. Uh, we have five items. Uh, item one is address display on properties. Item two is proposed all ordinance changes. Item five, Noah's Ark additional funding request. And item four, Chamber of Commerce additional funding request. And item five, a kiosk wrapping discussion. Uh, let's start with item one, address display on properties. Mr. Ruger, what do you have? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure who's presenting this. Do you, do you know Kim? I think it's code enforcement. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure where they're at. Um, Chris Smith, maybe? Yeah, so we'll, let's move on maybe to the next one and we'll... And we'll move on to the proposed dog ordinance changes. That's another one, too. That, that I have yeah, that. that if I'm going to it, yeah, Thank you. And Mayor and Council members, we have yeah, talked about this briefly before, and that is the dog at large ordinance needs to say that someone in possession of a dog can also be guilty of a dog at large um, offense. What is happening right now is if someone has a dog at large and they're contacted by, um, by the dog catcher, then they say, well, it's not my dog. And it's like either I'm uh, dog sitting or it's my son's dog. And really, word is getting out that it's a defense to um, a, a dog at large ticket that you can say that it's somebody else's ticket. So it, it needs to be that you were either the uh, owner of the dog or you were in possession of the dog. Um, and that is the, the proposed change. Yeah, yeah so I, that is I read that and it does make a lot of sense because it, it's so easy to say it's not my dog. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully you know, able, you know, people will be able to, not only for this change, but just to control dogs more because there are so many dogs that are running around. Right. Unleashed. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Now, I'll give you a good example where I live. I like when I take my dog around the loop, but there's two or three dogs that are running loose. You know, and what do you do? Right. And by the time you call the, uh, you know, they're gone. They're gone. No, that's right. right. And so, yeah, and, that's the issue. Right. And dogs, of course, are not like motor vehicles. I know that's really profound of me to say, but it's like they don't have they don't have a VIN number, right? So all you have is like say a brown and white, you know, uh, shepherd-like dog, and so you don't necessarily know if they don't have, you know, tags or, or anything like that. You don't for sure know who the owner of the animal is. So again, it could be somebody who, you know, does own the dog, but they just say, well, it's not my dog. I was taking care of it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And we, we can't cite them. Okay. So any, any questions from <coughs> council along the, on the matter? No. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So the best way to identify a dog, if they're within the city limits, would be a dog license. Right. Can we find them or require them to license that dog as well? We do. We do. We do. That also is part of it. But it's very common that if you have a dog that is running at large, that they don't have a license or they don't have, at least not, they're not going to have proof of vaccination, obviously, but um, they may not be vaccinated as well. So we do have municipal offenses for no license, no vaccination. And uh, we do have those as well. So it's a lot easier if you do have a dog that you know has tags and is licensed, so we know right away um, who the owner is. But it's more common that a, a dog running at large will not have that information. Would is there any follow up after, like say the dog you found the dog? Is there any follow up to make sure that that owner of that dog gets a license? and verifies that the dog is vaccinated. Because that's important, that's, rabies I think is the only one that's required. So, is there any, how does how do we handle that, Liz? Well, if somebody comes in and they have, let's say a dog at large ticket and they don't have a license and they don't have vaccinations, uh, or, you know, we don't know if they do. If they provide proof of vaccination, then that, that part of the ticket gets dismissed. 
or my policy is if the dog is unvaccinated and they will go get a, a vaccination and a dog license and I'll dismiss those as well. The overriding governmental interest there, I would say, is to get the dog vaccinated and, and, and licensed. Um, so that is what we have. And a number of people will come in and say, well, I just gave the dog to Noah's Ark or, you know, whatever. There are a lot of different um, ways that can go, but but we do, we try to make sure that they will have the dog vaccinated and licensed. So take them. <clears throat> I apologize. I don't want to monopolize, no. but so say somebody comes in and said, "I took my dog to the shelter. I relinquished ownership." Do you follow up, or is there any way you require them to show that they're no longer owner of that dog? Um, no. I, I would say the answer to your question is is no. If they give the dog up, I don't really look to see who the owner is anymore. They would still have a dog at large ticket, okay. and they may, you know, if they have no license, no vaccination, I would probably go forward um, with that. But, you know, sometimes if it's also in combination with a vicious dog, let's say the dog bit somebody, mm -hmm. and the dog is put down, then I, I handle it differently. But um, usually I would just have them plead a vicious dog, and that would be all. But if someone relinquishes a dog, I deal with a ticket, but I don't follow up okay. with what happens with the animal. Okay. I don't, and I don't believe uh, Ms. Sandoval does either. The owner would have to be responsible for any medical injuries, bills incurred. That's correct. We always require restitution if there's a, you know, Desiree a dog. Wants Desiree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Des. Over here. I do uh, follow up. If they relinquish their rights, I do follow up. I make sure that it's a an accurate paper or a statement. And it's an Document. So I do follow up. Okay. And I'm sorry, I didn't know Des was I out there. I would, okay, good. <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> I would have called on her a long time ago. I Wouldn't know. everybody much rather hear from Des than me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, the only question uh, that I would oh. have would be with uh, we need to get some publicity out there and put this in the paper because. Uh, you know, people, if we're just talking and people don't know the regulation, and it would be yeah. worth right. an effort to put that out so people understand what's going on. Good so idea. We have the newspaper there, and maybe we could get something read up for it. And right. Benjamin, out a couple, me. a couple times, not just once or twice. Hear that, Benjamin? Just kidding. <laughs> Benjamin called me this morning and was wondering about this, but I think that's a great idea and that have publicity about this. this oh, and it would be good, I think. Somewhere to maybe get it in our social media. Yeah, yeah. That's that's idea. And that that should also be in our hopefully in our. I'm not sure how this would be done. Is let's say uh, a new family moves into Trinidad, and they want to know what the dog alert in says, and make mm -hmm. sure that it's all inclusive in there too. I think that's important. Here's a whole chapter. Yeah. yeah. There, I think Councilmember Ogletree. Yeah, she, she did, did have a question. Erin, you have a question. I do, I, and you maybe will be getting to this, but I was confused about what this has to do with uh, dangerous uh, dogs. Um, because the first part of the ordinance that is in front of us has to do with keeping of a dangerous dog prohibited. I, and I take it that the second ordinance is just about correcting that it doesn't have to be the owner, it can be the person in possession. The first part of the ordinance is to increase the uh, fine for dangerous dogs. It's a good question. Okay. I should have mentioned that, but that is what we are doing. Number one. Okay. And what will the what will the fine be now? So it's under the general penalty. So it's no more than three or no more than three hundred. No, sorry. Excuse me. It's three hundred to a max of twenty six fifty. And what's the, and I assume we have a definition of dangerous dog, but I didn't get a chance to look through the code to see yes. what that is. We do, okay. we do, and, and yes, that is, that is in the code. Okay, that's the only question I have, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Anyone have any questions? I'm just wondering, was there an a uptick in um, dog interactions as well? 
why we're here or no, no what what precipitated this good question is I was doing a trial on um, on a dangerous saw in a dog at large. Yes, I'm 61 and I prosecute dog at large tickets. I'm kidding. Um, and anyway, the judge said I am not going to find this individual guilty because um, because he said he was not the owner of the dog. Got it. Okay. And so that you know that person walked on that charge. The uh, scenario that uh, Karen, or the first scenario that she was talking about, whenever uh, a homeowner says, well, I'm going to license my dog and whatever it has to get done, uh, is that you follow up on that as well? I don't think I, can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Go ahead and fill it in what you were talking about, how you determined that, that if someone comes in and says, okay, I've got my, that's my dog, but I'm going to license it and do whatever is necessary so you kind of let them off the hook to a certain oh, degree. Oh, yes, yes. I just want to know if you follow up to make sure that that has been done. So, um, if there's a vicious, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm screaming yeah, at you. Yeah, get on up here. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. So if there's a vicious dog, what happens is the officer will impound that dog at Noah's Ark. The owner of the dog will come in to see me and write a letter to the judge asking for a hearing for the release of that dog. So we have 10 days to do the hearing. At the hearing, the judge will ask if the dog is licensed, vaccinated, and all that good stuff. If the dog is not, then one of the requirements to get their dog back is to have it licensed and vaccinated, and I get a copy of that. And that's even if the dog is not a vicious dog, they just pick it up, right? Um, same thing? Not necessarily. How do you handle that? If the dog is at large and the officer takes the dog to Noah's Ark, he gives him a ticket for dog at large. I don't know that he follows up on the license and vaccination part. Mm -hmm. If the dog is running on the street and the owner is just like maybe across the street, he'll go take the dog back to the owner, give the ticket, but also ask for license and vaccination. If they're not, he'll charge him with those two things as well. And then if they provide those, chances are those will get dismissed, those charges. The other thing to look at here, I guess, and it's not on this particular uh, piece, but uh, do you feel that the charges that we are charging people, are they adequate? I think so. Okay, I don't know what I they do. are, but I just wondering if you felt like they were adequate. Okay. I do. You agree? I agree. Okay. Except for the vicious, and that's why we're here. Yeah. Right. Because we've been, the last few people that have been charged with that, we start at a minimum, and the minimum is thirty dollars. Mm -hmm. And so. I'll have to check with the rules and regulations with the Department of Agriculture, because mm -hmm. I think once any dog enters the animal shelter, they cannot be released unless they're vaccinated, and rabies and the others. And then what happens is, in order to reclaim that dog, the owner has to pay for those vaccinations. Okay. Do you guys know any? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Any other any other questions? So, so right. okay. Ms. Ogletree, do you have any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. We still don't have anybody here from code enforcement on item one, evidently. So let's move on to item three, Noah's Ark additional funding request. Hi. <laughs> Thank you again for allowing me to come back. That's for you three. Thank you. And this is for First of all, I'd like to thank you for allowing us to come back. I apologize that at the uh, our initial, we weren't able to provide you with the information that would be helpful for our ongoing discussion. And um, Mr. Lewis, our executive director, is currently out on medical leave, and uh, so that's that's part of it. But what I wanted to make sure is that you had some specific information so that as we have the conversation, you have that information. So some of the things that our contract as the, um, as the contractor with the City of Trinidad to provide the services that you're required to have by state law is the things that we have specifically are listed there under item number one. And so that gives you an idea of, of some of the things that we have. Um, the second item that we wanted to make sure that people were aware, 
And I need to back up and say, first of all, thank you to those uh, city council members and to the mayor that were able to arrange your schedule to come out and to do the, uh, you know, the tour of the building, because I think that that's been helpful for you to see what we're actually working with. It's a beautiful facility, but we do have some challenges, and I think it helps to actually see what those are. Mm -hmm. But during the design and the, you know, the building phases of the new shelter building, there were some architectural fe features that have really caused us some challenges. And so the one thing, the biggest thing is that the HVAC system, instead of being mounted on the roof of the building, is actually behind, which then took away all of the area for the free play area for the dogs. And um, it's pretty challenging when even animal control is bringing in a dog uh, into the door. It's a pretty close area. And so that's one of our biggest challenges is the fact that the HVAC system is all right behind the building and takes up what we would call the free play dog area. Um, to call. It also was built without having the proper outdoor shelter area for the dogs. Um, the dogs are inside, but first thing in the morning is they take the dogs out in shifts and they put them in the outdoor kennels while they clean and they get it all sanitized and done. And in the summertime, we also want them to be out there. However, those permanent, um, all of those permanent cages need to have cover on it for both the shade as well as weather, and they don't. Um, we had gone ahead and <coughs> Noah's Ark paid to have all of the outdoor shelters put in there, but that's another thing that we haven't had, and that's required by state regulations. And then finally, the um, building, as it was built, and I don't have that specific information, I was not on the board, but the square footage was dramatically reduced to what had originally been planned. So that's one of the challenges that we have with trying to take care of animals is we have a much smaller building than we had originally anticipated. Um, with that, and I'm not certain and we wanted to make sure that everybody was very clear, is that originally when the discussion was about building the building, Noah's Ark wanted to make certain that the city knew that we had a vested interest in working with the city. And so Noah's Ark went ahead and did a fundraising drive and was able to raise $375,000 that we then gave to the city to help with the building of the building. And that was kind of our buy-in to make sure that it was understood that we have a commitment to take care of this for the city. Um, in addition, since then, we have invested this past year over $70,000 to be able to buy what is necessary to run this shelter correctly. So we we continue to make a really huge investment into this shelter, which is what our, that's why we're here. Um, the Noah's Ark Thrift Store that is on Main Street is really one of the major fund funding revenues that we have for the shelter. Uh, just this past year, is they brought in over $117,000 net for the care of the animals. So um, they really do help us immensely with trying to carry through our mission. Um, this year has been a real challenge because we have seen significant increases in many of our expenses. And so you'll see there that I have gone ahead and listed down exactly what it is. Our veterinarian expensive have increased the biggest 207 percent but um, as you can see both the wages the food for the animals and medical supplies have all also increased um, what I have there on the back page then for you is that these are some of the things that we are needing is we would like to have you consider we know that that wonderful water tower is finally down <laughs> and so one of the things is that we would like you to consider possibly using part of that land for the play area for the, for the dogs. That that would be pretty close to the animal shelter and that may be something that we would like you to consider. Um, we did have a private citizen that has offered to donate $2,000 to help us to put the permanent cover on the outdoor kennels. Um, the quote that we got was going to cost between four and five thousand dollars for each section and we have five sections 
So that's also something that, you know, is kind of a capital improvement, that that's a, a, a huge expense that we have going on. Um, we would like to ask if the city has the availability with your grant writers to be able to assist Nozark so that we can start looking for other funding venues with grant writing to be able to do that. That would be very helpful as well. Um, we understand that right now that the city is looking at upgrading your security systems. And I don't know that you are aware, but there is no security system at the shelter at all. And so it would be very helpful both for the security of the staff, for the animals, and for your building that we um, have you look at, at possibly putting in a security system. Um, last year, uh, the contract that uh, was signed was for $35,000 is what the city had gone ahead and paid towards the uh, assistance running the shelter. Um, we thought it would be helpful for you to have an idea is that it costs us approximately $300 per animal to take care of them. Uh, last year our survey was 1,250 animals. So that comes to $375,000 and food costs us about $10 a day. So those are some of the challenges that, that we're looking at. And um, we would request that council uh, consider possibly having an executive session that we can go ahead and look at the lease and um, you know, be able to discuss these matters and take a look at them for us. Any questions or any questions? Well, I'm not really sure if we need an executive session right. necessarily. I, th I think it can be done in, in a session well, like this. Well, it's a contract, though, Mayor. Well, we, have a, a, we have a contract. I mean, that's a permissible reason to have an executive session. And so if you would want one, we could. But I don't know right offhand that there is necessarily a need for an executive session. I guess if you want to talk about it during an executive session, we can. I'm not... Yeah. I'm not trying to get pushed. And I guess it would be the items that we would be discussing if there's right, any, any right. sticky items yeah. I can understand. Yeah. And there may be things that are better discussed in executive session. I think I'm getting the vibe. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we could. We absolutely could. Well, you know, I, I went out there and don't want to jump ahead of everybody else, but I did go out, I did go out to the tour. And uh, one of the things that uh, was interesting to me is there is where you have the outside shelters for the dogs. Uh, and if you were to turn dogs out in that other area where the HVAC system is, it wouldn't be good because uh, a dog could get and start chewing on some of the components of that, which would destroy it. So, uh, you know, now that the tower is down, do we have any ideas of any future use for that? Mayor, I've already talked with uh, Dave Bacicca, our Power and Light Director on that. Um, so he wants just a portion of that property to store some transformers, yeah. but um, we're definitely willing to work with you on providing some space for animals. Oh, cool. um, so we, if you want to have uh, Matt or when he's ready, reach out to me. We can schedule a meeting to talk about that and figure out how we can work out a plan for that. I, I, think, that, our radar. I think that would be good. If yeah, we can, yeah you know, we're on board with that already. In a little bit, of course, but yeah. and, and then the grant writer mayor would be the other one that would yeah, I, you know, more follow under me. Not a problem. Um, as to leave this time permits, we can definitely avail her, her skills to help um, with not only finding grants, but maybe help uh, write some applications as well. Any any questions from council? Mm -hmm. Not a question. Go ahead. No, go. Hi. Um, not a question, but let's take the scenario that we were talking about prior to the dog that is loose, no license, no vaccinations, come to the shelter. The shelter by law has to vaccinate that animal, notify the owner, okay, your your animal's been here. You can come and get him, but you owe three hundred dollars for vet services. Mm, big portion of the time, that owner will say, "I don't want that dog," and they relinquish ownership of that dog. So now the animal shelter has that dog. We have to keep him. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how many days it is, but the dog has to stay there for X amount of days before it can be transferred or adopted 
it has to be spayed and neutered. That's a state of agriculture. Here's a scenario that uh, just popped into my mind. Let's say somebody does exactly what you're talking about, they okay. may relinquish that dog. Right. But they go out and they find another dog somewhere, and then it gets caught again. What happens in that, I mean, that's another scenario yeah. we'll talk about in the, in the first part. I think that would be, so I think that's something that maybe we need to, as a second offense is what I'm talking about. So anyway, yeah. but anyway, so as far I, it's as this, just, I'm giving you that information sure. I'm sure you'll understand the challenges that we have at the end. And then one of the other things too is that uh, they have the ability to microchip the animal. Yes. And so then if that animal would escape again, and they would find it, right. they can go ahead any place in the United States. It's not just at Noah's Ark, but any place they can look at the microchip and it has the owner's information. Right. What is the charge for microchipping? It's less than $100. It's around $100, I would say, yeah. 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 Other, other questions, other on, questions? On, on this matter? Eli? Or, do you know the approximate cost of a, of a permanent cover? Because you'd have to have something that's contoured to where you're going to have runoff. Right. What they're telling us is that for the sections, they're going to run about five, four to five thousand dollars per section, and we have five sections. Yeah, five sections. Five sections. Yeah, because I was out there with Karen and Mr. Lewis, and I was impressed with the facility itself. So that sounds like a pretty steep price per section. What, what kind of cover are we doing? Well, they're about? metal cages, and so what it is is they have to be a certain height. And then they have to be able to withhold a snow load, but mm -hmm. they also have to be such that they would protect the animals from the sun or from the, the weather as well. That's what the Department of Agriculture requires. When we first moved out there, we did what we thought might work, and we used some heavy-duty tarps. The tarps were being replaced on a weekly basis, yet they just did not hold up. And so, you know, we've tried different things, but there's actually a permanent cover that needs to be attached to those. So, though I don't have all the, the specifics on it, um, Mayor Rico, what I, what I am understanding is it's going to be something that will be permanent, that it would be welded on there, that it would be something that there would be a permanent cover on that. So if the animal was out there and it was raining or it was snowing, sense, yeah. it would be covered. If the if it was um, a lot of sunshine, that they would be protected. How big are how big are excuse me, how big are those cages? Oh, they didn't look too big. But. Mm -hmm. I you uh, know I, I to tell you the dimensions. I I should know that. I apologize. I don't know that off the top of my head. But I'm going to say they are probably like. Is that about ten? No, maybe. maybe. Maybe like eight, eight by ten. I was going to say eight by ten. Yeah. I think that they are a little bit longer. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Go ahead, Lena. Well, I was just going to ask you, when you're sh shuffling the dogs in and out, are you in violation because you're bringing them outside and there's not a cover right now? No, it's a situation is that at this point, like, it's cold out here now. Well, yeah. And so they go ahead and they take it out, clean out the kennels, and then get the dogs back in. In the summertime, we like to be able to have the dogs out sure. and to be able to have more outdoor time. The problem is, is that if they don't have that cover mm -hmm. and that shade, that it's detrimental to the animals. Of course. Yeah. Okay. okay. And Mayor, if this was something that we move forward with, the city would bid this out and look at state pricing for this and see, you know, that we can get it as low yes, yes, as cost yes. as possible. Questions? Other questions? questions? Any questions? Ms. Ogletree, you have a question. I, I think we all um, are so appreciative of everything that Noah's Ark, the nonprofit, does to help us fulfill what our our duties are. And I, I think, um, I hope that we are responsive to the requests that you have. I, I have always loved that this city makes the humane treatment of animals a priority. Thank you. You know, my question, going back to the, the cost, because it's, if it's like, let's say, an 8 by 10 cost of, uh, 8 by 10 section. Not the section, each, ca each, each kennel. Each kennel. Yeah, right. each it's kennel. By, by and there ten. are several sections that go right. together that, yes. And you're talking about four to $5,000 per kennel. All per section. Per section. Per section. Per, <laughs> per group of, uh, of per, kennels. Per mm -hmm. group of 10. Mm -hmm. Or is that... 
Five. Break it. I'm trying I don't, to break I don't think it's, I think it's 10, and I do apologize. I, I don't have that specific, but there are different sections, and I'm not sure how many kennels are in each section. Uh, okay, that I do know that there are five sections oh, okay. That, okay, together that, mm -hmm. okay, that okay. has several kennels within that section. Okay, because if it was per kennel, I was going to say, well, that's pretty excessive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but... And Mr. Is it, I'm sorry. Does it have to be a particular type of material for? Yes. Um, they they are the, what they have recommended. So that's what the quote that we had gotten was on what the Department of Agriculture was recommending. Do you know what that material is? I don't. We I can don't find out for you. Yeah. Yeah. We can get that information. Most definitely be happy to work with you on that. Yeah, because it'd be worthwhile. Because if it's a specialty company, you might even check with the local source to see if they have yeah. availability. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I well, and that's what we would prefer is, is our preference is always to use local. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's who supports Noah's Ark or our local community, sure. and that's what we want to be able to do is to support the local okay. businesses as well. you have an additional comment? No, I was just going to say you can get whatever mm -hmm. requirements for the overhangs. Yeah, we'll get all the get information, whatever would be helpful, we'll be happy to do And make sure, because the last thing we want to do is build something mm -hmm. that's not forming with what the state wants. Yeah, and then you want something that's going to last mm -hmm. a yeah. while because if you put something up, like you said, you, you try some type of cover and it just didn't work. Yeah, pro yeah. 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 Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, Chief Bathrack is here for item number one. Okay. You come forward, Chief? Uh, we uh, skipped over because no one is here, but can you give us some information on that item number one, which is the address display on properties? And I, it does make sense of what uh, we're going to talk about. Right, and when you appointed me as chief, um, I sent out a flyer in that first quarter of uh, 2022 in all of the utility bills trying to get people to address their homes and everything like that. And then Audra, I know just recently, was trying to update this ordinance, and um, she asked me some for some verbiage and I put commercial property. My biggest issue with my biggest life safety is apartment buildings. And on the end, like the 600 block of Godding, they have multiple apartments in there mm -hmm. and our guys are forever struggling to find out addresses. So if I can get those addresses on the curb with a sign, it would speed up our response time in those mm -hmm. apartments. And I think she added that to your ordinance. I haven't been able to look at that ordinance, but I think that perfect was that is. Yeah, we need to make sure it's specific to apartment complexes as well as residents. Okay. It's in there. Okay. So it's in there. So yeah, if people can have big enough addresses where we can see them from the streets, it's for their benefit. The other thing, and but I think another thing that would be good is uh, the addresses are fine, but. You know, at nighttime, if mm -hmm. they're not lit, right? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Did she put something there about contrastation? Yeah. Yeah. Contrast yeah. 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 And then, yeah, I don't know if it's on that. It's something that's illuminated. That's yeah, the two inches. inches has a size on it. And a color that contrasts with it. Yep, that's perfect. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. And then the buildings that are set back. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty How much leeway are you giving? 50 feet? Plus yeah. Or minus? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's 51, I'm not going to see At least I can see something. All right. Okay. Other questions on this ordinance? Go ahead. Just so we'll treat. I, I wondered if it might be better to say um, rather than that contrast with the color of the building to say something like that contrast with the color of the background just to be clear because buildings can be all different colors parts of the building can be one color so you really I think the, the point is that you need to be able to see the, the number in front of whatever background is on. Okay. And, and I think it wouldn't be I mean maybe not force people to do it but maybe even if you would just recommend if in that ordinance that they get illuminated as well because uh, it, it would benefit you guys right no, I, I agree. Yeah. so on new construction new construction is mandatory okay yeah it's already built into the code 
because you know the cost of uh, solar lighting right now, if you can buy a, one that will illuminate for pretty cheap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a re reflective material too. They, yeah. they sell the numbers in reflective material. Okay. Other questions? I'm in violation. We got to correct that. <laughs> yeah. I got to figure it out, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is the protocol if a house is not numbered for a certain amount? And of you time? call for an emergency. That's on you, not on us, for the delayed response, right? Okay. Yeah, that's true. It's nice, but it's not visible. Right. Did somebody have their hand up? Did somebody have their hand up on the audience? I was, I was agreeing with Karen, my house too. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's two people now. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank Anything you. Else? Makes sense. Okay. okay, item four, Chamber of Commerce, additional funding request. Good afternoon, everybody. appreciate you all taking the time this afternoon and uh, for those of you who don't know me um, I'm Andrew Boffman and want to kind of first give you an idea on why uh, I joined the chamber board at this point in time why I am where I am to kind of give you guys an idea of everybody in the side of the room right now they're in the board or in the chamber in this case and why we're each here and why we're each on the board in this Okay, so background, we moved here in 91. My mom had started the Edward Jones office here in Trinidad, which is where she had actually uh, gotten involved with the chamber. Then she was the chamber president back in the early 90s as well. And it was something that was um, paramount to the building for a business over the years. And I understand that things change, times change, as well as um, different facilities. but. When we look back at what it did for her business, that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Uh, but not only that, number two, I moved out of Trinidad and college because I didn't see the value, I guess you could say, of our community. In other words, um, a small town kid wants to have big city life, went out, realized that it's not the case, so came back. And now I'm confronted with something that I never really considered. And that's the fact that I have three kids right now. Toby's 12, Eli's 11, and Liberty's coming up on four five. And as a parent, I want more than anything to be able to see all three of my kids thrive here in our community. And if we look at, unfortunately, my generation, a good percentage of them, a good portion of who I went to school with, they're not here. They're gone. So. To give you an idea of why I'm here with the chamber and trying to uh, petition for our sake is somewhat selfish in case for my kids, for my family. But in the case that that does go back to very much benefit each and every one of us as members of this great town. Okay. So, as I mentioned, we've got um, Kayla here in the front for us, Claudia Henning, Jerry Peters, Mary Pacino's joining us. We've got Marky Davis, and then back we've got Eaton. So we're here again to represent and to show what we want to be able to put forth as a Chamber of Commerce to you guys for the rest of the year and really continuing forward, hopefully long into the future. We are a very dynamic group. We all work together. We work very hard. We Anybody who's on the board in this case is not just by name. You know, that is something we've seen a lot in the, in the past here is, say, hey, we have so-and-so on the board. It's just a name. They're not present. They're not there. They're not working. We are a, a very dedicated working board. Currently, we've got both Jerry and Kayla as basically co-leaders in this case. We felt it well rather than immediately appointing another president. It's working very well for us. Working together is more of a balance versus one head in this case. So that's definitely different, but it's something that's working and working well for us. So when we look at, hopefully did each one of you guys get this ahead of time, our business plan for basically the year. So as you can see, 
we're, we're really in a point that we need help going forward. We really do. We um, did some searching throughout, <coughs> if you uh, Google cities between our population range, there's about 10 of them throughout Colorado. There's one of them that has an active and thriving chamber. And that's going to be out uh, by Grand Junction. It was, uh, I think it was, was it Redfin? Redland. Redland. So it's Redland. Now what's different with them is they do receive the tax dollars from tourism. So they have that ability to be able to continue going, continue to have that income stream. It's <coughs> that's forward. So we had come to a solution. I've been on the board now for roughly six months. We came to a solution of how can we go ahead and become a chamber that is giving back, a chamber that's being able to go forward over the long term. And that was going to be by membership. We have figured that we need something sustainable. We knew how many, approximately how many uh, businesses were licensed in the area. So we figured, hey, if we can go ahead and get somewhere around a, a third of those businesses that currently have licenses, we can basically get enough revenue as a chamber to survive. And we worked very hard over the last six months to increase membership, which we did. But at the same rate of adding people, unfortunately we had, the, we had attrition as well. So through their hard work, especially Amy Rossetti, uh, we could not do it without having our executive director. Um, we ended up adding about 40, 44, I believe it was, new members, but at the same time we had the exact same amount of people end up leaving. Now, one solution that we did come up with that we did enact is one of our hardest or our biggest challenges was you get somebody signed up, just like Amazon, um, any type of membership, do they bill you every single month? No, they set something up automatic reoccurring. It's one of those things that continues to happen. We hadn't set anything up like that up previously, so it was always trying to reach back out to the business and basically get a recommitment every single year. And if they're having a bad week, a bad month, or just a bad day, sometimes it's, no, we're, we're, not, we're not at the point that we can do that. So that, that really made it difficult as well as, as we know, coming forward in 2022. So we have a lot of exciting things that we want to do. Challenges we have to balance between actual events that are going to benefit our economy, benefit our businesses, but then at the same time we're trying to balance between surviving. So rather than being able to strictly focus on what can we provide for our businesses and how can we help our businesses, at the same time we're trying to think, well, how can we fundraise to be able to preserve ourselves also? We've been here for uh, nearly 150 years now as a Chamber of Commerce, and I think it's something that can be continue to be valuable going forward tremendously. And as things keep changing with our city, you know, there, from my understanding, the Labor Day Parade potentially we're not going to be having, as well as the um, uh, Roundup. I think the burrs were getting close to winding things down. I don't know if that's that's again from our understanding. And as we see some of these things changing, as and people stepping back from the positions that they were in, we would really like to be somebody who can continue to step up to fill these roles, to be able to, again, continue to give back to the community that has so much given back to each of us. But realistically, um, we, we can the position that we're in. Most of us have full-time jobs, most of us have careers, and most of us have families. And being able to have somebody to answer the phones on a day-to-day -day basis is paramount. Otherwise, we again, we're not an active chamber in that case and having the workforce and labor to be able to put on some of these events that we want to. I mean, Santa Fe Trail Days is, as we know, one of those staple items for Trinidad. And it's something that we want to be able to continue to do. But realistically, we're in a situation that if we look at the future, we have a business plan right now that shows cutting our executive director down to half time, basically. 
that'll get us to the point that we basically break even for the year. If we have the city continue to do their membership, we continue to have the membership that we do, not have attrition, keep things as is, we will be at the point of just making basically at the end of the year what we have in the bank today. But again, that's assuming we keep going as is, which we've had a full-time executive director to do that for us. So we're really at the stage of petitioning for the city that we would like love partnership more help on your guys' end. Unfortunately, it's always money, as we know that. But we want to show ourselves as a chamber who's willing to do whatever it takes to give the businesses what they deserve, to be able to grow, thrive, and survive in our community. And realistically, we can't do that without funding and support from you guys. Okay. Questions? Andrew, do you think you'll, there'll be more stability in the existing board as opposed to maybe the high turnaround you've had in the past? It's a good question. I, I feel that there is. Um, I've been asked many times to be on the board in the past, and I always declined in the case of um, many different personal reasons. But in a case like my own, A, I'm here to stay as well as I know a few others definitely are committed. Eden's been here for a good time now. And again, with the commitment that we each have, I think we're looking at a different scenario. I, I hope and I pray so. So it's better by not having maybe a board president? I, it, it seems to alleviate a lot of some of the tensions in some of the uh, school room fighting. I know you're Okay. Other questions? I feel your pain. There is nothing harder to do than to try and operate a nonprofit, especially post COVID. Yeah. I'm looking at this, your uh, finances here, yeah. Andrew. So the 14,890, I'm trying to figure out what your finances were last year because. Your expenses, you show 27000 plus for operating and 45000 plus for payroll. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, operating of a, uh, total expenses about $72,000, so, almost 73000 Correct. So your in income, see, I, I, I'm trying to figure this out. You show your net income of 29758 what does that include? This is a negative. Oh, I didn't see the negative. Yeah, so it's, that's in red. So you're saying next, oh, okay. next door bank balance, correct? Yeah, yeah it doesn't that. show. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So if you look on mine. That's what I was looking at. Okay, that makes sense. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, that's a negative number. So unfortunately, it didn't come okay. across on yours. Okay, got it. It didn't show up. Ours doesn't print in color. Um, I guess we have to put our heads together and see what we can do to help you. I will mention that tourism tax is governed by ordinance and we can't do anything with that money. There's so many regulations and requirements how that money is spent on what. Yeah. Do you guys have, a, do you have something specific you want the city to do? So in this case right now, to be able to retain Amy is hopefully full time because again we have her marked down. It's going to part time, and we don't. Again, knowing uh, employment and being able to to survive off of part time, there's a very good chance we even lose our executive director. So at the point that if we want to make it through the year and be able to retain her, we need approximately an injection of about twenty thousand dollars to be able to continue paying her salary through the end of the year and hopefully get on a point that we're again making forward motion and forward progress rather than the backwards that we've been seeing. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? What, what type of events do you have left, uh, lined up this year? So this year we've got a few different ones that are set up. We've got Santa Fe Trail Days, we've got a business expo, um, we do our coffee talks. Now, when I say business expo, it's something that 
we're looking to do a little bit different. We're mixing together. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever done like a taste of you know a different place, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a combination of both restaurants and businesses, and hoping to do that either um, at the park or fairgrounds, where we can go ahead and get both businesses, the restaurants to come together, and hopefully get a lot of the community. No, no admission on it. We're just doing there to try and get more people in the community to realize what businesses are here in existence to be able to hopefully continue to make through we're charging small booth space uh, expenses $25 for uh, members $50 for non-members so we're starting still trying to make it something affordable but then also where local businesses can come the restaurants can sell gift certificates to their place and have food samplings um, places that do arts and crafts they can bring some of their stuff advertise what they have. Uh, like I said, it's had Fig Trail Days, which we all very well aware of that. Uh, we've got our business showcase luncheons that we do on a year-to-year -year basis, uh, excuse me, month-to-month -month basis. Uh, let's see here, because this is something we've been going over a lot and talking through. A lot of it has to do with what we're able to sure. take on at this point. If we are able to take on more based off of help, we do so. Who, who does that look like in first generate projections uh, when all said and done after your events? Kind of so after the events, that's where we're really at our break even. So right now, we're, we're looking at a balance of about fifteen thousand dollars in the bank currently today. That at the end of the year, we're sitting at about the exact same. But that is with bringing our uh, executive director back down to part time and assuming that we do retain her. So, again, we're not trying to do it as a, we need to survive as a business, right, business model, but we're not trying to do these events as an income generating. And all of the um, figures that we're looking at that we put forward, forward in front of you guys, these are our conservative estimates. Because we would, again, plan, we prefer to plan for worst case scenario with the incomes versus plan on something the best case and come back to you guys next year saying it didn't work, we didn't do what we th what we promised we would. Mr. Rooker, mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at their problems here, we got that creative arts building yeah. there. Isn't there a way we can give them an office space in there so they wouldn't have to pay the thousand dollars a month? would make a big, big difference on that. And that would, you know, we, we got that building. We, we, we might as well use it. And it's important. The Chamber of Commerce uh, could be really good. And, I, and I, I could see that the people out there are, and I'm not saying they're good with the other groups, but it seems to me that they're more involved and they want to do things for Trinidad. And I think it would be important for us to uh, help them out as much as we can. And we do have that building. We have the space down there. Uh, I, I think that would be a good idea to work work on that, and and also we also have a bunch of boards that we need to look at, which we are uh, to see what we need to combine some of these together yeah. that that we don't we just don't need and put money into you know some places that we could get back uh, for the city. But I think that would be a really good idea to look into getting them a, a place to stay and cutting that rent off. Even if, you know, we, we have the building, we have to heat it, we have to do that. And we have the space and we, this would be a good opportunity for us to do something for the community. Yeah, something like and, that would be highly beneficial. And, I, I, and it's also downtown. It's also <coughs> in a good area there that uh, people could come in and out and put a nice sign there. And get people into our buildings too. Uh, in the downtown area. Is there a space? So, uh, Mayor uh, and Council Member, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Certainly something we can look into. We do have office space in that building. Um, there, there would be some concerns that we're already experiencing there with building access and uh, that type of thing, but it's certainly something we can look into, talk with Wally, and see if there's some feasibility in providing that as an option. Do you have a lease? Yes. You guys know where we're at with that? And does that not if a lease? Doesn't that lease actually bring the, the lease is a five year lease that we're just over a year into? Mm -hmm. So we'd have to get uh, the leasing company to 
let us out. Yeah. Potentially something we can talk to uh, the building owner yeah. about as well. Yeah. Right. Questions? Questions? No, yeah. I do. Nope. Mayor? Go ahead. Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Um, certainly, the city has all sorts of interests in seeing to it that our business community is well served and supported. Um, but I do want to know, I didn't see anything in your uh, business plan that you provided to us, what evidence it is of how these events actually benefit our businesses. Do you have any kind of measurement that you do with regard to, you know, after we do the Santa Fe Trail Days, the businesses have this much more foot traffic? or after we do these coffee talks or whatever it is, I think I really do want to see that what you're doing is increasing traffic to the businesses as well as to their websites. Um, I think that would motivate me personally more to get behind what you're doing. Okay. I see a lot of activities, but I'm not sure I'm seeing how that ultimately moves the ball. Reach a reward, correct? I'm sorry? Uh, that is making sure it's reaping a reward. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Eric, I mean, no, I do have uh, several questions here <clears throat> I've written down. <laughs> you know, as, as we know, is that for any organization to thrive, mm -hmm. you need to have mm -hmm. your leadership in place that's going to create a positive atmosphere. That's correct. And that is the chamber is a primary organization in the city of Trinidad, otherwise it wouldn't have, it would not have been here for the 140 years that it's been here. Sure. So over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of issues. Yes. And that's why we questioned it last year as to what direction you guys were going in. There's been a change, and we've seen that change, and it seems like it's more positive now than it has been. And so it needs to be, as any organization that's out there, even our own organizations we have in there, have to have reasonable, you know, leadership, you also need to be apolitical so that you don't get into a rut with that situation because that could kill your that could kill your organization immediately. Yeah. So you need to be careful with that. So a couple of other th the other things I've got here is this is where I think you can find some additional funding. I think you need to go to the county because right now the county is only going to give you like twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We're giving you ten. Sure. That's what we've given you. Los Angeles County has allocated $120,000 this year for uh, nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. I think that they should and they could actually step up to the plate a little bit more for you guys. Absolutely, and, and we are going to be. So I think it would be good if you approach them and give them, because they're, they're the ones that are going to benefit. Uh, you were talking about the uh, Labor Day issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought that up last year uh, with whoever was running it. And, uh, you know, years ago, the carnival was there. Yeah. It was all at the same time. Things drifted away yeah. when things pulled apart. And I asked, why is there no carnival here anymore? And they said, well, we were, they were been told that because the state fair had their foot in the door that they were not allowing uh, other communities to have fairs at the same time. So I just happened to be invited to the state fair, and I met the state fair president up there, and I, I asked her about that. I said, that is not true. Mm -hmm. Anybody, because there's other communities in the state that have fairs. So that door is open. Yeah. So I think you, should, you guys just need to get in there, and if that's something that you want to do, because that drives businesses. Okay. And it did drive a lot of businesses, you know, or a lot of businesses, but other, well, other businesses, but as well as, uh, people in the county to come into town, which would help resources oh, absolutely. and funding. So that was something that, you know, you guys maybe could look into. Uh, developing, developing membership is your key and uh, one of your major key items. Uh, and you pick up 40, you lose 40 through attrition. Have you gone out and checked with the people that you have lost why they left? Yes. Have you done like an, you know? Yeah. If I can speak to that, Mayor. Uh, yes, we have. What, uh, what are the primary reasons that you're hearing why they left? Because the chamber in the past has not proven themselves to provide a benefit. 
Okay. And so with the economy being the way it is, the very first thing they drop is something that doesn't give them back any value. We have worked very hard in the last six months to change that. And I think our shop, small shop local program proved that. Okay. I mean, we did not make any money. The chamber didn't. But we didn't lose any money. <laughs> and I think that was a plus. But what we brought on, if you remember my presentation back to you, we brought on over 60 participating businesses into that shop local program. A lot to do with the advertising. And I look at Eli because we were over at KCRT on a weekly basis talking about the program. Um, I think that now they're starting to see value. We are putting on new members, new businesses, or been in the area for a year or two, and now are saying, hmm, the chamber. So it's slow. It's very slow to have this movement forward, but we are making progress. But it's going to take the rest of this year to prove sure. ourselves. Like the Santa Fe Trail days, the, we were not a robust event for 22, and we'll be the first to admit it. But this year, I have talked to Rotary, American Legion, uh, uh, Kiwanis, and all these other organizations, as many as I can find, to bring in in order to make it a big event for the town. And we're looking forward to that being this year. So are we bringing value to this community? Yes, just we need this year to prove it. Okay, here's, here's something else. I, I think I've asked this before. Is uh, business, businesses and even individuals that want to join, but businesses primarily yes. in Los Angeles County. Yes. Get the numbers. See what they are. If there's 300 businesses in it's the over county, or right, over 800, yeah. so you have a potential of let's say even 50 percent. Currently, how many how many members do you have? Oh, it sucks. We have a little over 100. There you go. So you have a target that you can try to oh, target. Yeah. Okay. We want 300. So what you want to do, the one thing that you want to do is those people that you've lost to attrition, I'm not sure what your membership is for small business, but in order to gain them back, one of the things that you might go to them and say, okay, let's say it, it costs them $100 a year to participate. We, okay, $200. We want to bring you back. We're going to cut that in half for you to prove to you that, to try to prove to you that we are willing to go on to try to work with you and try to make uh, the chamber work for you as a business. Offer them something as, you know, give, give them a carrot out there. And maybe, you know, and maybe the second year, they don't want to stay on. So and I, I think and that's and something you may want to consider. Oh, definitely. And, and there, it's, it's things that we're really trying to, to work towards doing. But unfortunately, with really comes down to manpower yes. again. Mm -hmm. With what we can actually accomplish doing with the workforce we have. Now the fact that we have a bigger board and we have a more active board, it is making things more mm -hmm. more available to us. But we're on a path right now, like I said, we, we're at a, that kind of turning point where it's saying, well, do we want to survive through the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Even if we increase membership, even if we do some of those things, it takes time to actually see those results. So. Unfortunately, kind of what we're discussing here doesn't doesn't give us a a solve for current, and we're trying to prove to you guys why I kind of started putting my name out on the line in saying why I'm the one presenting here, because I'm the one that really not the only one. Sorry, guys, <laughs> but we really want to see this become and be successful. One of the things that I'm seeing is that you're you're actually at a almost like a starting point yeah. is really where yeah. you're at. Yes. And it's going to take time to build that capacity. Right. It really is. So yeah. if you can just, like I said, just survive through the year with it, like you said, it looks like you might be able to, if you can continue with the membership that you have, with the, the funding that you're getting, at least it provides your basis for the following year. Now, I'll, I will tell you this, is that, you know, our allocation that we talked about, you know, our budget is pretty tight, as you well know. And that's why I mentioned that I think if you can encourage the county to come on in addition. But one other thing that will help you, if you can get out of your lease that you have, like Frank who mentioned, uh, I'm not sure if we want to necessarily give you, you know, the place free and clear, but if we can, let's say, cut it down to half, because it would be, it would not be fair to other uh, organizations that maybe we want to, that want to come in there too. But let's say, 
Because let's say if it's costing you a thousand dollars a month, that's twelve thousand bucks yeah. a year. So let's say we can get you in there for let's say five or six thousand dollars. That's where our additional benefit back to you would be. Oh sure. So that would be a tremendous help to you. So you know the the uh, uh, we are going to be discussion di discussing things as in our retreat uh, coming at the end of next month uh, about uh, yeah. combining like you were talking about combining yeah. uh, other organizations. Uh, and we're going to be discussing other things that might be a benefit down the road, but it goes to a board approval down the road and that we'll be talking about. But I just wanted to give you guys those particular items I thought that might help you. It doesn't help you like immediately, sure. but it could be a basis to build on. Well, we appreciate the input. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, what is your relationship to the cannabis community and uh, the uh, dispensary owners? We have several members that are. They have participated in our shop local program by even giving us uh, giveaways mm -hmm. for the program. So we have a good relationship with those that are our members. Okay. Anything as far as uh, doing events or something more active? They are very uh, welcome, uh, um, putting it not correctly. Every time that we have asked, they have contributed to the events that we have. So it really boils down to you know the benefit from the membership that you have Correct. to retain and gain because word of mouth will travel a little along with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I might make a suggestion. You might talk to uh, I'm not sure exactly who in, in Raton their chamber or their. They do there. not have one. They have Our, what's called Raton ambassadors. Okay, every year they have a carnival festival for fundraising. And it really turns out really well for them. They put it on at the school uh, uh, parking lot, and they really get a lot of people. They have it for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you might be able to talk to them, and maybe if that carnival's in this area or something, that might be a really good fundraising uh, deal for you guys to look at. Well, because you know, they'll be you, there. You know, we used to bring that here in town at a different time of year, not at, not at the Labor Day mm -hmm. period. Was Tom? Uh, Davis. 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 Yeah. Tom Davis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might talk to him because he has some connection with some yeah. carnivals that he, he brought in a few years back. Yeah. And then I'm not sure why he quit. But even if it was at a different time of the year, big deal. But maybe we could have it a couple of times of the year. Sure. We've done carnivals. And my husband and I have been involved with another chamber. And we did carnivals. And yes, they do raise funds. Mm -hmm. But they require a lot of work and a lot of volunteer and a lot of organization. So it's a putting it on the list is another event to do. And we've got as much as we can handle okay. with what we have. Okay, like I said, you know, you know, Tom Davis, he did this in the past. Why don't you talk to him? Maybe okay. by him helping you, maybe you can get a cut of the pie. I and, love he, collaboration. And, and he yeah. and you know, he, he may be able to uh, you know put it all together for you guys. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you for that suggestion. So, that was a good suggestion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Just keep working hard for Trinidad. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, Andrew. Andrew for you. All right, thanks, thanks, Andrew. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the time. Okay, on to item five, uh, kiosk wrapping. That is something that has been brought up by the uh, tourism board. Uh, they have a couple of uh, electronic kiosks that are going into place in downtown. And I guess there is a wrap that can go around uh, the kiosk, and they're asking if maybe the city would want to sponsor the uh, you know the wraps on them. And I can't remember exactly what the cost of those would be. Well, I've got some pictures of what uh, actually I do with that. Uh, is it, they're they're from Sufa, and they are a solar powered uh, turnkey. And what they'll do is if you want them to pass those around. This is what they look like. And what they'll be able to do is do actually do advertisement. Uh, businesses can advertise. But the overall wrap uh, could be something that, I, that uh, they're asking if the city would want to do. Uh, I mentioned to them last week when that uh, we had that discussion during the meeting that maybe it would be better to try to get maybe one of the larger uh, businesses or companies, industries, to maybe if they want to advertise the wrap themselves, but I'm not sure what you guys think. Where uh, exactly would these be placed at? The one is going on Commercial Street, and the other one is going at the Miners Memorial Park area. Those two are his. 
They want to be right next to you, one of them. In that area. Right there. Here, I want to find nice. myself. <laughs> just, okay. Put your name on her and do some advertising. Oh. <laughs> but you know what? That's kind of counterproductive. That's kind of counterproductive for the city to advertise. Okay. Why don't. I mean, so the tourism board is putting these up. Uh, it would be more beneficial to have the businesses that are going to generate the revenue advertise on these things. That's why I bring it up. I thought that, you know, if we can get one of the industries or one of the biz, larger businesses to want to do the wrap. Because um, in actuality, we are we are sponsoring it because the yeah, right. yeah. city's yeah. paying for them. Yeah, I agree. What are your thoughts? Frank, any thoughts? No. Just That's advertise. You, you brought it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aaron, do you, Aaron, do you have any, any questions on that? I think to some extent um, those kiosks should reflect that they are City of Trinidad um, sponsored. I, you know, that should be clear somehow on them. I can't see the pictures that you're passing around, but I, I think the city of Trinidad should be um, featured somehow on there. Okay, Nima? Uh, like Aaron said, Aaron said to uh, definitely tie into the tourism and travel situation and with uh, the chamber, that would be great if, if uh, it could serve mm -hmm. more than purposes. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I, I like I said, I have I'm of the same opinion uh, that I think that. Uh, you know, maybe a, a local business sponsor the wrap on it would be more beneficial. Yeah. Some of those pictures you showed us that had several. There are a, there are other areas area. in between, uh, yeah. like in here where a business could buy you know get a spot, and uh, these can be. Uh, I'm not. I can't remember how it's done. I'm not sure Mr. Rugler knows, but sure. they they can change uh, some of the the activities that are going on. Let's say the chamber is going to have uh, any particular event. Events can be sponsored on these, and they can be changed. I think electronically. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason for these kiosks. And they're essentially they're, they're solar powered. So uh, they're actually thinking of uh, being uh, getting these installed. I think sometime in March, uh, so that they'll be in place for the tourism season. Are these are these interactive? Do they do audio? And I don't think it it's. I think it's just uh, visual. Video. Visual. Yeah. Visual. visual. So, Mr. Ruler, do you want to give that back to Marty, or Mr. Mayor? Yes, I'll, I'll give that feedback back to Marty, and uh, we'll bring any concerns that precipitate out of that approach to uh, you all. Okay. Uh, I think they just wanted to give uh, the council yeah. an opportunity if we wanted to do something okay. ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give that back to Marty. Les, you want to put your name on that? Is it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. That'll ensure defects in the kiosk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other items uh, for future uh, work sessions that council wants to bring up? Uh, I don't think we have enough coming with our retreat. Yeah. So with our retreat yeah. coming up, yeah. we've got a pretty good. Um, Mr. Ruger and I have sat down and we've gone over a list of items and uh, we'll bring those up. I think so. We'll just kind of be the status quo at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, just uh, for, I think, the, the newspapers here, uh, Mr. Mandel, is that uh, if you can put in the newspaper that the, my city, to the state of the city address is next uh, Wednesday at 6 o'clock at the Pioneer Room. Yeah. And if you would, uh, up until a few days before, make sure that they put it on that side mar sidebar okay. would, so that people can see them. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I think this is an opportunity for the, we don't have the time to go over every, every, every aspect of what we've done this last year, but we'll give you some good highlights highs and lows, and it's a good opportunity for the city to find out what, we, the what night. we've accomplished and what maybe... Thursday, is that the night? Is it Thursday? Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Thursday. Night. Thursday night. Okay. I was going to say, it's Tuesday, we have issues. Yeah, uh, Tuesday. Just kidding, I, I heard. Yeah, it's yes. Thursday. So it's Thursday. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, it's a good opportunity for the community to come out, and we'll, uh, uh, Mr. Murphy will be uh, putting that on YouTube and on channel 71 as well. <laughs> All right, thank you for being here and uh, for the input. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
The bank is getting lower. I know it. It is. I guess I have to give you 